share part of your life at this conjuncture of circumstances is a unique opportunity for I am grateful. My soul cherishes every moment of my stay, feeding the plethora of reminders. I congratulate you, President Dr. Rutov, on your recent successful stay visit to the United States. It's a signal of God's favor, and at the same time, an increased accountability for the people of Kenya and Africa for its diplomatic altitude. It's an inspiration for Africa that the delight is sincerely shared. I want to convey my special thanks on behalf of my family to the people and government of Kenya. 24 years ago, my wife and our two children were forced to flee from their country and ended up in one of the Nairobi refugee camps and stayed for three years while I was under politically motivated imprisonment by the Zen government for 12 years. During those darkest periods, of our family, Kenya became the ray of hope to my family. My son, who was seven years old then, always gratefully remembers now that Kenya taught him to speak Kiswahili and gave him Kenyan friends. The theme of this year's Kenya prayer breakfast, hope. And my privilege as a speaker made the meaning of hope too personal. The fact that hope is reverberating from this place also made it too Kenyan. And for that matter, too African in the prevailing circumstances. I call my life journey the pilgrimage of hope. When I decided to join my friends as a teenage student in the 1970s with a vision of transforming the oppressive and poorest Ethiopia into a free and prosperous country, the driving force was hope. When a handful of us left our homes, abandoned our loved ones, fled to the mountains of Ethiopia, and fought in armed struggle for 15 years to the point of losing our lives. For the cause we believed in, the overriding power was hope. During the breakfast, during the darkest 12 year segment of my prison, life in solitary confinement, hope was my only anchor of survival. However, in the first five years when I was engulfed in total hopelessness, my spirit died. I attempted to commit suicide in prison twice. I had nothing left except dreaming of death until a person called Jesus of Nazareth appeared in the middle of the night <laughs> through his light and gave me hope miraculously that I would not die. I would get out of prison and I would live for testifying his name around the world. <laughs> that is what happened later after I got out of prison. And as he promised, 
he let me travel around the world except Australia and I wish someday I will go there <laughs> and lifted his name for many thousands of people to come to him. Then hope empowered me to figure out a new purpose while I was in prison, which restored my spirit, allowing me to defy death and start finding the meaning of life and personal growth in a new way. I understood I had to do my part, I had to do my part to keep hope alive and make the new dream of living would come true. It was then that I learned and practiced what the Harvard leadership studies coined, the shift of mind from ego system to ecosystem. Years before I read and knew about this theory, it's about a recovery process from survival to make a journey of hope to fruition. I stopped looking and or thinking from the outside in and started looking from the inside out. I began understanding myself as part of the whole problem. The socio-political environment. Instead of thinking myself, as alien and immune. It was not difficult for me to embrace the biblical concept of metanoia, shift of mind from the old way towards the new, the truth and the eternity. I remember the day when I said to myself, I would do it differently if I were the leader of Ethiopia now. It was a deep understanding of myself as part of the nation, as a socio-economic political environment from ecosystem to ecosystem. The years I spent in prison for this reason became the most beautiful time of my life. Viktor Frankl, the Austrian Nazi concentration camp prisoner, said in his book, The Meaning of Life, I quote, when a man finds that it's his destiny to suffer, he will have to accept his suffering as his task, his single and unique task. He will have to acknowledge the fact even in suffering, he is unique and alone in the universe. No one can relieve him of his suffering or suffer in his place. His unique opportunity lies in the way in which he bears his burden. My fellow Kenyans.